Okay, welcome to uh, the first of a two-part discussion on the I2C serial communication protocol with the LPC802 for the EECS3215 class at York University. All right, so today we're going to be talking about I2C. We'll ask, what is it? We'll try to answer that question, and then we'll talk about uh, how it's used within the 802 processor, this one right here. Um, so I2C is one of three different type of serial protocols that are available on the 802 and 804 processors. We'll use the built-in temperature sensor on the OM40000 board uh, that we use in the class to demonstrate how I2C works. So to begin with, we'll ask ourselves, what is serial communication and what does it do and why is it important? Okay, so the very first thing uh, to talk about is that serial communication basically boils down to uh, digital bits on and off signals that are sent from one device to another device over wire or fiber. And uh, each of these bits or each of these on or off signals means something. And in order to derive what that meaning is, we have to know something about the context of what signal is going back and forth. And also to know something about the sequence of bits, um, whether it's on, on, off or off, off, on. Um, when and how that's happening is important. Probably the most uh, recognizable visual representation of this is from the 1999 movie, so that's way long ago, uh, called The Matrix, and uh, their digital rain effect, where you have um, letters and numbers and symbols falling from the sky, falling from above, represents a, a stream or a series of bits that are, or a series of characters that are falling, starting from the top and falling downwards towards the ground. And each one of these symbols, each one of these uh, characters means something and the order in which they fall and where they fall also means something. In this case, the secret behind this is that they're actually sushi recipes, but that's a story for another day. Okay, so the very simplest thing that you can do to represent a serial data stream using a microcontroller is to uh, set on off signals one at a time um, and and sort of alternating between on and off at what we refer to as 50% duty cycle. So half on, half off, half on, half off. And if you generate those signals uh, and view them say in a logic analyzer or oscilloscope from your microcontroller and you send them to a PC or a, a Mac uh, machine and you've got a, a terminal program running on there, you can actually see these these bits, these on and off signals, being converted into characters, like in this case, the period character, over and over and over and over again. Um, now, it's not all that exciting, but what we end up seeing is that over time, as these signals are being transmitted one at a time, eventually, when you get enough of them, you'll have a translation of that sequence into a single period on the computer, so over that USB line that you've got. And you can keep going and you get more and more of them until you have so many of these on that's pretty boring. You can make them into different letters and numbers and, and characters, but that would require us to change the on and off pattern. Okay. So if you were to change it from maybe not 50%, maybe some other duty cycle, um, then you would be able to see some different pattern emerge on the computer. Um, something else that's important to point out is that these uh, symbols, or, or when they arrive, they arrive over these uh, on and off signals, and they're done at a particular bit rate. In this case, I'm sending them at 300 hertz, which is 300 bits per second. All right, before we go any further, one of the things that's important to point out, because you'll see it when you start looking at data sheets and, and other documents, is that there's terminology issues when we talk about serial uh, devices. And what's important to point out straight off the bat is that uh, when we talk about serial communications between one device and another device, it's really boiling down to coordination between these two different devices. If you don't coordinate properly, communication doesn't happen. The problem is that uh, the way that some of this terminology is done, it comes across as domination rather than coordination, and I'll explain why. So it's important to point out that when we have these serial devices, we generally have one device 
that is transmitting and another device that is receiving. These two devices share the coordination of a wire or a set of wires and that coordination really is important. Um, sometimes one of the two devices or multiple devices controls those wires to be able to send out information um, at a particular schedule or in a particular order. Sometimes it's another device that finds itself on that wire that's controlling it. Neither of these devices is superior to the other. They're just coordinating with one another. We generally should be representing the, the thing that maintains control as the primary device or the main device. And the other or other devices um, we can refer to as secondary devices because they can take control of the wires or the communication cable, um, but they generally are doing it uh, in coordination or having listened to the primary device in the first place. What you'll see is that in a lot of the documentation, this relationship is referred to as a master and slave relationship. And really, it's an inaccurate uh, way of describing the relationship. It's really lazy, uh, and it, it really does, in the end, if you really think about it, it promotes a racist history and, and power structure. And really, there's no point in, in having language like that. It just excludes people um, and, and isn't, at the end of the day, accurate in describing the actual relationship between uh, the devices that we have. And as engineers and scientists, we want to strive for accuracy. So let's use words like primary and secondary, or primary and main, uh, as, um, as ways of better describing how these devices work. And depending on the context in which you are using these devices, you'll actually see that the terminology changes because the relationship between these uh, individual devices on a network will be different. Okay, so let's talk about the LM75 temperature sensor. The LM75 temperature sensor is a chip that's found on the OM40000 board uh, that we use with the LPC802. The chip itself has eight pins. You can see four pins there, four pins there. Those uh, pins allow a communication protocol to be connected uh, with the SCL and SDA lines. We can address different devices using the three address lines, and this would connect your temperature sensor to, for instance, your microcontroller. And there is also the possibility of having, if there's a temperature emergency, it's too cold or it's too hot, the LM75 can send an emergency signal or an interruption signal uh, back to the microcontroller to say, hey, something wrong or really good, depending on your perspective, is going on, and please pay attention. So what does I2C signaling look like? Well, let's, let's look at it from the perspective of the C code that you're writing, as well as uh, what appears on logic analyzers when you hook up a logic analyzer or oscilloscope to your microcontroller and temperature sensor. Okay, so here we're gonna look at a sequence of messages that are being passed back and forth between the microcontroller and the LM75, and we're gonna show uh, how it's done in the C code, which we'll get into detail later. Okay, so up above you see what's appearing in terms of the SDA and uh, uh, I, uh, sorry, the SCL lines on the logic analyzer. But here is a, a C function, and the C function belong or begins with um, a wait condition. Basically, it's waiting to make sure that the I squared C module that's inside of the LPC802 is um, ready. And once it's ready, then it sends in a data uh, series of bits um, as an address that we're going to use to access the um, temperature sensor as well as in the least significant bit position a zero. Then we tell the I squared C uh, module that it's safe to start so we send something into its control register and then it, it sends it and then you can see what ends up happening is you get a clocking signal on the SCL wire and you get a signal as well that occurs uh, on the SDA line. And at the very end, on the ninth clock in here, you get a logic value of zero that appears. And this one isn't being generated by the microcontroller. This one is being generated by the temperature sensor to acknowledge or ACK um, the signal was received from, um, by it. After that, what you end up having is the, another series of clocking signals and these are being sent by the microcontroller and then you've got a bunch of well basically the zeros that are being sent 
by the microcontroller on the SDA line. You can see that signal right there. And they get sent as soon as the control register in the I squared C module receives a continue uh, command. And that's what this mask right here is. Okay. Okay. Next up, what you end up having is uh, another signal that's sent from the microcontroller to the temperature sensor. And this signal is basically the address, once again, of the temperature sensor followed by bit one. Oh, I'm sorry, just to go back there. And then temperature sensor as a zero. Uh, and this is once again, the acknowledgement that it has received its address and that is valid. After that, the uh, microcontroller um, is supposed to listen to uh, data that is coming from the sensor to the microcontroller. And so the microcontroller will continue to end up clocking the uh, SCL line, but it is listening to the temperature sensor on its data line. So the, the, the temperature sensor that's creating this signal right here. After that, another series of bits is sent from the temperature sensor to the microcontroller. And, uh, and it fills up um, a buffer a second time. Now, unfortunately, I think I've messed up this right here. This uh, shouldn't be like this because there should be clocking signals from the microcontroller being visible on here. So I think I got the wrong screen capture right here. But basically what you'd get up here at the top is clocking signals from the microcontroller and down below, you would get a series of bits from the temperature sensor. So when you have these two separate transmissions from the temperature sensor back to the microcontroller, it fills up two buffers that are found in an array. So two different cells in the array you can think of, and they're both 8-bit uh, cells in that array. And they will contain two uh, pieces of information that will end up being combined by our C program to be representative of temperature. Okay. Um, so how, how does all of this work basically? Well, um, what we do is uh, on the board, we take the chip, we connect it to the microcontroller via um, a pair of um, pull-up resistors. The address lines are tied specifically using um, some resistors and either ground or the 3.3 uh, logic or logic power. Um, the uh, interruption pin is not connected um, and the signals will be sent either as uh, clocking signals from the microcontroller to the temperature sensor or there'll be the back and forth signals from the uh, microcontroller or from the temperature sensor. Now, it's important to point out once again, just to reiterate that there are pull-up resistors on the temperature sensor. Uh, and what that means is that basically if there was ever a disconnection or one of these devices wasn't powered or taking control of the uh, communication lines, the SDA and SCL lines will default to a logic high value. All right, internally inside of the LM75, there is um, an analog to digital converter. And we know that there's also an analog to digital converter inside of the microcontroller. But in this case, the ADC is found inside of the uh, temperature sensor. There is basically a, a microcontroller built in that uh, takes care of communications, addressing uh, interruptions, etc. It has a timer, it has a counter. Um, basically, all of the goodies that you see inside of a regular microcontroller, you also find inside of the LM75. The LM75 is able to uh, convert temperature values, say from 127 degrees Celsius down to almost zero degrees Celsius, into quantized values that can be represented either as decimal, hexadecimal, or binary twos complement values. Now, when we were showing you the logic uh, analyzer values that were being passed back and forth, 
there is actually a data sheet representation of that same process. You can find that inside of the data sheet. And you can see basically first message, second message, third message, and then this is the temperature that's reported back from the temperature sensor all the way back to the microcontroller. And you can even see the acknowledgments that are sent by the temperature sensor back to the microcontroller. And there we go. That's the end of part one. We'll be moving on next to part two. Join me for that.